Imagine a sunny day in Arizona and there's no wind. And, all of, and it's 100 degrees outside. And all of a sudden a cloud comes over and cools down a little patch of air underneath it. That produces a temperature differential. Hot, cold, what happens? The wind blows, energy moves. Ener energy needs a differential to move between one place and another. So I propose that Newton's third law, Newton is the great physicist who preceded all the physicists in our age, including Einstein and Max Planck. He said, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And I said, well, the more I look into the quantum universe and everywhere in nature, that isn't true. I'm seeing that every action has a, as a reaction, but there's a difference or a differential leftover vibration between those reactions. And I showed you my presentation. Well, when I, just at the end of the conference, I was talking with Mark, uh, Mark uh, Cuthbert. Mark, are you out there anywhere? There he is. And we were talking about the idea of the Great Pyramids being an actual stargate, an electronic stargate between here and a distant star system in the Orion's and Orion belt. And I thought, how could that possibly work? And I really worked on this problem. And, and thanks to Mark, he really got me thinking about it. And when I worked on the problem, I realized what the answer was. And we're going to move towards the idea of building a stargate, an actual stargate, and how it works using very, very simple harmonic technology with my new breakthroughs in differentials, the hidden harmonic codes of the universe. So using my galactic clock, this is my galactic clock that I measure subatomic particles, galaxies, and solar orbits and planetary orbits with. And with this clock, I was actually able to show how you can actually break the speed of light. It's a very uh, long kind of presentation to get into that, so we're not going to go there. I also showed how the Earth has different rings. It has the Van Allen radiation belts, the purple that you see here, and then you have the green plasma paws, and they're spinning counter-rotational to each other, clockwise and counterclockwise. And we notice that the purple here is a shorter wavelength than the green here. And the gray here, the, the, the magnetopause, is an even longer belt of energy. So we see how there is no such thing as equal and opposites. There are spaces between waves that are called differentials, which cause energy to move out of zero point field. In fact, after I, I enhanced my study on differentials, just recently the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration took an interest in this paper and read it and it's now circulating all over the administration because I predicted the graviton, the missing particle in physics, the one particle that nobody can find. I mean, everybody can see the effects of of gravity, they're in the most obvious thing, but we can't make that thing go up. We don't understand it. We have to find this particle called the graviton, and I predicted it was in the differential between the electron and the positron. That the graviton was not a particle, it was a differential between the motion of two particles. And the NOAA told me that they've noticed differentials in gravity, in their measurements on gravity at the South Pole, and that's why many scientists over there are reading my paper now. And if that's true, the graviton and the force of gravity is a differential. It is not a particle. And if you know that, and you understand how the graviton works, you can produce anti-gravity. And that is what the blueprints you've seen are all about. This is a very simple example for those of you who don't remember what a differential is. If two waves were coming along with the exact same amplitude and force and speed and they hit each other, it would look like that when they hit. And they would just cancel each other out. But you never see that in nature. You see this, two waves. This wave is going five miles an hour, this one four, and it curls over. The differential is right here in the curl on the crest of a wave. Those are very simple differentials. And then we looked at the quantum universe. These are real photographs from bubble chambers of electron-positron pairs. And the first thing I did is, if you look at the red versus the white wavelength, the red is going to complete an oscillation here sooner than this will which means the electron and the positron are not equal and opposite, yet physicists today, at, at, at the Large Hadron Collider and searching for the God particle, they all keep telling us that every particle cancels the other guy out to zero. It is not true. It's very, very obvious. I wrote Frank Close, who's a world-renowned particle physicist, and he said, I just got lucky, just showed up in one photograph. I showed him another pair of electron-positrons here, and we can see that this is obviously wider than this. 
But since we were here last year, I decided to measure the diameters of electron positrons to see what the ratio was because the, the magic number between them would tell me what the graviton's number really is. What is the harmonic code of gravity? And I didn't know this last year. This is very, very brand new. So right here on the left, I blew this diameter of this orbit up to 10 centimeters, and I measured the next one, which is its counterpart, the, uh, the electron, and its diameter was 9 centimeters. And if you divide 9 into 10, you get 1.1111111. And this little 1.1111 guy, I, I end up finding out, is everywhere. In fact, it's more prevalent than Fibonacci sequence, the 1 to 1.618. And I did this all in the last year. And literally, studying you know, dozens of models of subatomic particles, I find, I'm going to speed through this, find the 1.11, because this is all from last year. You know, we did the, um, and for those of you who haven't seen my presentation last year, and want to get cut up, you should get the video here at uh, the Congress. This is my swimming pool experiment. You know, looking at man-made geometries on how all the sides are equal, it's very, very wrong because in nature, like this crystal, all the sides produce uneven numbers. And I do all this math, I did math on the sound of the sun water crystal, and I generate my numbers for my differentials. So I decided to measure um, an orchid, a flower, and I measured the two petals from the center, and I blew the image up, and this was five centimeters and uh, 4.5 centimeters and five centimeters. And when you divide the numbers, you get the 1.11111, not not Fibonacci. Everybody knows about Fibonacci's um, one to 1.618, but that's not what I was getting. And the galaxy, the spiral arms of a galaxy, I actually blew this up to a very large scale, 20 centimeters from the dead center to here, and 18 centimeters here. You divide those into each other, you get the 1.1111 everywhere. Everywhere. And you can clearly see if you get a trained eye when you're looking at a Fibonacci ratio versus the 1.111. Now what's amazing about this little 1.111 guy, if I can find my little calculator in here, uh, I don't know where it is in here, but I'll just tell you what it is. If you, I believe in the creation of the universe, for those of you who follow sacred geometry, the idea that two spheres collided and form the Vesica Pisces upon the moment of the Big Bang, I believe the ratio between the two spheres was a 9 and a 10 ratio, which produces the 1.111. I believe it's the mother of all harmonic codes in the universe because it is virtually everywhere. If you square 1.111 on your calculator, which just means times itself, you get 1.2345678 9. It's the birth of the numerical sequence. And so what I do, why are these numbers so important? Why is the 1.11 so important? Because if you build your wave generators with these dynamics and, and produce these kind of, these aren't frequencies, these are differentials, then you tap into what that number represents, which is the power of creation. Um, NASA's Ulysses flown over the sun's poles three times between 1994 and 1995. One big puzzle revealed by previous flybys is the temperature of the sun's poles. In the previous solar cycle, the magnetic north pole was about 80,000 degrees or 8% cooler than the south pole. They didn't know this. Nobody knows. Why should there be a difference? No one knows. This is NASA. My differentials discovery tells you why there's a differential. Studying differentials all throughout the solar system, this is Saturn's north pole. You see the hexagon structure up on the North Pole here? Finally, they photographed it dead on, so I blew it up to scale, and I found my centers, and I found nines and tens, ratios of nines and tens everywhere, and that's 1.11111. It's everywhere. It's the secret to gravity. I showed you it in the, in the electron and the positron, which is where I predict the graviton is. You have to know this number if you want to find the graviton. I thought, you know, the 1.11 is definitely it. One night recently, my wife woke up with a dream, and she was given this math formula, and that's um, about a, a, a harmonic set of numbers that me meant nothing to her, huge numbers, like 2,200 and something and, and another number. And 
I divided the numbers into each other, and I got 1.33333. I thought, you know, wow, what are the odds that my wife would have a dream and give me a number 